A decade ago, this is how I used to play with hardware. Pretty interesting, huh? Now it is even more interesting. With the arrival of Arduino, Raspberry Pi, and other low-cost development platform, you can build physical things easier than before. But still, there are problems to be solved, opportunities to grow, and gaps to be filled. Today, I would like to talk about five points through which you can fill those gaps and accelerate to the future of hardware. So let's start with the cost of building your minimum viable product. I started prototyping with Arduino a couple of years back, and it cost about 40 bucks. Today, when I'm building something more mature, my workspace partially looks like this, and it cost about $5,000. So you see that the cost is still a barrier to entry for many of us, especially in the early phase of the project when you are really experimenting with many ideas. And the cost goes up with the complexity of your project. But I must say it's not all that bad uh, because of 3D printers, prototyping platform, and the overall hardware community. They're all trying it hard to keep the cost low. But we still need to reduce the cost more. We need to offer free samples, low-cost samples, and tools like this, so that makers, builders, hackers like you, like all of us, can build even more. So how does the turnaround time look like? I wanted to build a very simple demonstration of read and write to a DIY device from the internet. I ordered a Wi-Fi shield, waited seven days, doesn't work, figure out what can help, order a new one, wait another seven days, and keep praying, and it eventually worked this time. So for this simple project, I was delayed two weeks. For a hardware product, the average turnaround time is 18 months. What do we need here, then? I wish there were a push button, you just press it and get whatever piece of component you need, but that's not going to happen. We really need more local retail stores, and availability of the tools and products in those stores, so that that way your development time is reduced, and your overall product development time, turn on time, is reduced as well. Next, uh, let's talk about funding. Although investors are less reluctant these days about hardware, this is what the funding scenario looks like. This chart was compiled from last three years of crunch-based data, starting with 2011. All these three years, less than 1% of funding went to hardware companies. Why? Because there are not many hardware companies. Why not? Because there are not enough funding to begin with. Fortunately, this, this scenario is also changing uh, because of the recent success of crowdfunding platforms. Those platforms are actually very good. They give the venture capitalists an early indication of uh, market opportunities for your product. So let's see what these crowdfunding platforms are telling us. So this chart is actually compiled from Kickstarter data starting at 2011. We see that there is an increasing number of hardware projects. This chart, by the way, doesn't include semiconductor uh, results. So in 2011, there were about 0.5% hardware projects, and last year it was more than uh, 3%. So what's the takeaway here? We need more investors passionate about hardware. We need more investors less reluctant about hardware. This is already hard. Let's try to make it easier, right? What are the top four or five skills that you think you need if you want to build some physical device? So I try to list down a couple of them, like uh, basic electronics, uh, hardware system architecture, embedded programming, PCB design, and so on. So I was wondering, OK, how can someone learn them? Schools, maybe? On the job experience, uh, for what else can you do? Scattered internet resource? Maybe another way. So I compiled a list of courses taught by uh, 10 fantastic companies. They all teach coding. So let's look at the chart, what it shows. 10 out of 10, all the companies teaches web design. 8 out of 10 teaches mobile app development. 3 out of 10 teaches game development. And none of them teaches embedded programming. Why? The answer, again, goes back to the same problem, cost. If you want to teach your students uh, embedded programming, then 
hands-on embedded programming, uh, then you need to supply them with uh, microcontrollers and tools like that. So that actually increases your cost of education, and many organizations cannot support that. So how, how can we solve this? We need even more fantastic organization that can support this, that can teach you these skills so that you can build your next amazing device. What about the community around hardware movement? One of my friends was looking for hardware skilled people for his project, and he couldn't find enough places to look for them. Not being successful in arranging hardware workshop is one of the common problems for hacker spaces, even now. But this scenario is changing also with 100 plus hardware meetups and a growing number of active members in them. For example, in October 2013, there were uh, more than 700 active members in those hardware meetups. As the maker movement marches forward, the hardware community keeps growing. These are some of the fantastic companies that are leading this movement. Uh, there are actually even more. I can't list them all in one slide, unfortunately. But the point is, uh, you have a place to share your projects, like Make Magazine, Instructable, and so on. You have a place to build your project, like Hackerspaces. You have tools to build your projects, like uh, 3D printers, uh, CAD tools, and so on. You have a place to sell your projects, like Etsy. And you even have a place to fund your projects, like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and so on. We want to keep this movement going strong. We want to put even larger efforts to it. And we hope that you all will be part of it. Thank you. <laughs>